Hello, I'm Sierra Dom, founder of the Visual Snow Initiative, and I'm incredibly happy to introduce a first of its kind, free and globally accessible program created in partnership with Oxford Mindfulness and neuroophthalmologist Dr. Sui Wong, whose published research and objective fMRI scans of the brain have demonstrated the efficacy of mindfulness-based cognitive therapy for visual snow syndrome. VSS affects millions worldwide, and it can impact everyone differently based on a myriad of factors. This may include the specific symptoms you have, the intensity of these symptoms, when you began experiencing symptoms, and your medical history. Additionally, guidance from a physician who understands VSS and resources to help are not always available locally. While they may be possible for some, availability of time, access to a qualified provider with knowledge of both MBCT and VSS, and costs are prohibitive for many individuals with VSS. It was important to us to offer a mindfulness program that is globally accessible and free for everyone with VSS, so that anyone who is interested now has the opportunity to try this option if they would like to. Our new program, Mindfulness for Visual Snow Syndrome, is an introductory MBCT-based course designed for visual snow syndrome that can be accessed anywhere in the world via computer, tablet, or mobile device, completely free. Approved by Dr. Wong and designed by Oxford Mindfulness in partnership with the Visual Snow Initiative, Mindfulness for VSS is an abbreviated version of the MBCT that helps study participants in Dr. Wong's VSS research and a VSS-specific variation of Oxford Mindfulness's Intro to Mindfulness course. The program is designed to be self-paced, user-friendly, and optimized for convenience while retaining content from the original MBCT program to maximize efficacy and potential symptom reduction. So in my clinical practice, I was seeing people with visual snow syndrome and with the recent years, a research showing that there is a dysregulation of the visual pathways it got me thinking about what can we do to treat the condition and help people with visual snow syndrome. I was very touched by the experience of people suffering from this condition and it really felt like we urgently need something to help people experiencing this condition. It was also around that time that I wanted to bring mindfulness into my clinical practice with the background of the benefits of mindfulness in myself and also wanting to bring it into uh, my clinical setting and research setting. That's when I got my training as a teacher in mindfulness-based cognitive therapy through Oxford Mindfulness. And it was during that training that I watched a documentary that touched me tremendously. It was about John Kabat-Zinn, who is um, oftentimes considered the uh, father of um, mindfulness because he brought in mindfulness into the secular, se secular um, setting. He brought it back in 1980s to treat um, chronic pain and it's evolved so much over 40 years where it is actually delivered as treatment in medical conditions. So there is a lot of research to show the benefits of mindfulness and mindfulness-based interventions on brain connections. This could include uh, benefits uh, of mindfulness such as from cognitive function to memory to general well-being, of course. The results of that first study, particularly with the functional MRI, it showed that brain network connections changed with the mindfulness treatment, the MBCT vision. And people also reported improvement of their symptoms. So I've been so grateful that that happened. It wouldn't have happened without the support of VSI. And that led on to presentation and publications of my results, um, which, is, uh, which led on to further research on using MBCT vision to treat visual snow syndrome. So having the functional MRI scans as part of that first research study was absolutely crucial 
which is why I'm so grateful for the trust and belief from the VSI to fund that uh, component of the study because we needed to show in an objective way of something changing in the brain and we did with the functional MRI to show that the brain networks were changing. It was changing um, in two aspects actually. One was in an area called the dorsal mode network and the other was to do with the visual pathway aspects. So this kind of confirms what we were expecting from the point of view of how visual snow syndrome happens, where there is a dysregulation of the brain networks involving the visual pathways. So it's the first time that we had a study to show that there was a treatment that changed the functional MRIs in people with visual snow syndrome. Because the very first study showed that the longer people practice MBCT vision techniques, the better they got. From the time when VSI approached me with the idea of the app to the point now where it is available, it's amazing to see the output of this. It's such a professionally created app with such a methodical basis, with the very strong foundations of the teaching of Oxford mindfulness delivered in piecemeal uh, chunks that allows people to gain access to mindfulness teachings. I've been just so impressed by it all and particularly grateful that this means that there will be wider access for people with visual snow syndrome to get access to the concepts and the practices of mindfulness. The app is not a replacement for the care from their doctor, it's not the, a replacement for a therapist for people who needs it, it's not a replacement for in-person uh, support. And there are lots of factors that could be affecting somebody's visual snow syndrome. So there is a bigger picture here that will oftentimes need to be considered. And to think of mindfulness, whether it's through the app or through an in-person support uh, group learning, as an extra tool in the toolkit to manage and get better from visual snow syndrome. This app created by Oxford Mindfulness in collaboration with the Visual Snow Initiative is a tremendous resource for people with visual snow syndrome. From my research using mindfulness to treat visual snow syndrome, I think it likely helps in a couple of ways. One is that we know in visual snow syndrome there is a dysregulation of visual pathways and mindfulness can settle this sense of excessive um, hyper-reactivity to the visual uh, pathways and it also trains the change in awareness and the settling of the body from the sense of the vigilance system. This would be a self-paced app so it would be a case of getting access to this more readily and people can tap into that globally. Practitioners, uh, medical professionals, who often times ask me how, what kind of resources can we signpost for people to get mindfulness uh, resources. And because of the high quality resource from Oxford Mindfulness with this app in collaboration with VSI, so this would be the app that would really uh, help people with visual snow syndrome who want to try mindfulness. I continue to work tirelessly for people with visual snow syndrome and I hope to continue to make a meaningful contribution. I have to be honest and say that I had not met Sui prior to her presentation at uh, Nanos. Uh, and uh, at that meeting, uh, they had a session that was more or less dedicated to visual snow syndrome. Uh, Sui presented her work, which showed that um, using mindfulness techniques, which I believe were based on the Oxford uh, mindfulness uh, programs. Uh, they were able to, she was able to demonstrate that over a period, I think it was uh, uh, eight and 12 weeks or eight and 16 weeks, that there was a significant improvement in patients um, with uh, visual snow syndrome. And, and let's be clear here, that what we're trying to do when we treat anybody is to make them feel better. Almost everything else is irrelevant. So the fact that she could make them feel better with mindfulness was a big step forward uh, on its own uh, without anything else being considered. 
But she had combined this with uh, functional MRI and showed, as has been shown with mindfulness in the past, that there were actually changes in functional connections within the brain. So in some way, shape or form, we're modifying the programming because the structure can't change. The actual hardwiring cannot change, but the, the software programming can change. Now, uh, I, thought, I found that incredibly exciting uh, to the extent that I, I sought Sui out and had a long discussion with her afterwards. I thought it was the most uh, exciting uh, step forward in visual snow that I'd come across in uh, all the time that we'd been working in the area. Um, you can't make any criticism of the work because it was a pilot study, and so it was a small number. But it was statistically significant, okay? And, and uh, you can say that uh, statistics are to scientists like a lamppost is to a drunk man, used more for support than illumination. However, they really are valid, and her, her figures were, were, were solid any way you looked at them. Needed to be validated with a much larger study Okay, and that's what she's in the process of doing now. And in the long run, as I said, functional outcomes are what's important. And she's continuing with the functional uh, study on a, a significantly larger number of patients. The main um, benefit of the functional MRI is that, that it demonstrates that we are modifying programs. Uh, and that modifying programs is associated with modifying perception and function so that um, uh, more than that we, we've never really understood entirely uh, which part of which uh, uh, network is primarily responsible uh, for the generation of all of the symptoms of visual snow syndrome and I suspect that there are different networks that are responsible for different parts uh, but the fact that we can modify uh, functional connectivity implies that the programs are being changed. And that's, that's I think, the main value of the study. I prefer the, uh, the mindfulness MBCT um, study because it's very physiological. Uh, and I think that, um, uh, that this is uh, visual snow syndrome, as I've said, is, I believe, uh, an abnormality of function predicated on impaired software programming. And this is the one thing that specifically uh, addresses underlying programming uh, from, from other studies as well as from uh, Sui's uh, early studies. Now, with uh, the mindfulness, firstly, you could do that anywhere. Secondly, uh, the cost of doing it is minuscule. Uh, thirdly, it seems to be effective. So I'm really optimistic that um, all of the uh, criteria for an easily distributed uh, effective therapy are met, and I'm optimistic on the basis that the science behind it is solid. VSS involves dysregulation in the brain's visual networks, causing a constant noise-like perception. This dysfunction extends to attentional and salience networks of the brain. Objective functional MRI scans of the brain before and after MBCT show significant changes, indicating that MBCT can target and modulate these dysfunctional networks inducing neuroplasticity, and affecting critical neurotransmitters associated with the biology of VSS, like serotonin. While there is currently no cure, research into possible medications and additional non-invasive treatment options is ongoing. In the interim, there are methods available that have been shown to help which are supported by clinical evidence and objective neuroimaging. The expansion of accessible, diverse, safe, and viable treatment options for VSS is important to effectively accommodate the various needs, different symptoms, medical histories, and treatment preferences of the global VSS population. 
Mindfulness, or MBCT, offers a non-invasive intervention to potentially reduce visual and non-visual symptoms by retraining brain pathways and alleviating symptom severity. If this option interests you, it will now be available anywhere for you to try at your own pace and comfort. We will be sharing further announcements and the latest updates on all of VSI's platforms in the future, including our website, visualsnowinitiative.org, our newsletter, and social media channels. Feel free to sign up if you want to stay tuned. Thank you so much for supporting our mission to make the world a more accessible and informed place for people of all ages affected by VSS.